me right now is Congressman Trey Gowdy of South Carolina. He's the chairman of the House Oversight Committee. He's a member of the House Judiciary and Intel Committees. Congressman, it's a pleasure to have you this morning. Thanks so much for spending the time. Thank you. Do you now have the documents that you have been requesting since August to best assess whether or not there was a massive abuse of power at the FBI around the election last year? I think we have an agreement that they're going to produce the documents. You're right, Maria. We asked for them in August. We shouldn't have had to wait until January to gain access to them. But I'll be back up there Monday. Uh, I don't think Devin has looked at the documents yet, but we got an agreement last week uh, that they would provide them to us. Well, what what is your sense in terms of what went on here? People want to know if Hillary Clinton is above the law. Well, I, I think there are a couple of things. You, you mentioned Strzok and Page. That goes to the issue of bias. That's incredibly important because I think your viewers, uh, our fellow citizens, want an FBI that is bias-free and dispassionate. The other issue is even laying bias aside, did the FBI engage in a process um, that, uh, that, we, that, that we can have confidence in. And 2016 was a really unusual year. You had one major presidential candidate under investigation, and you had the campaign of another presidential candidate under investigation. So it's not illegitimate for Congress to ask the FBI and the DOJ, what did you do, why did you do it, um, so we can understand the process. That is separate and apart from the bias evidenced by at least two FBI agents. So where does this lead? I mean, you've been stonewalled since August. You're finally getting documents last week and this week uh, that you've been asking for since August. We know, for example, when you look at the Hillary Clinton side of things, her, each, uh, her IT manager, Brian Pagliano, initially said he never deleted anything to the FBI. He told the FBI, I didn't delete anything. Then apparently has an aha moment that says, oh, wait, yes, I did did delete emails uh, from Hillary Cl uh, of Hillary Clinton after we know that those Hillary uh, those emails were actually recovered and he gets immunity so he gets immunity despite the fact that he lied to the FBI deleted emails and didn't tell anybody that there were these emails that existed well, there were several immunity agreements in the, in the Clinton email investigation, and, and, and that's actually what House Judiciary and Oversight are doing together. We're not looking at Russia. That's House Intel Committee. But Judiciary and Oversight are looking at all the things that led up to Russia and whether or not the FBI and the Department of Justice handled this like they would any other case. And, Maria, quite frankly, um, I think the DOJ and the FBI would admit to you that they did things in this case that they had never done in any other one. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean a sinister or nefarious motive. It could just mean this was a really unusual fact pattern. But it's not illegitimate for us to ask. And I have been, frankly, stunned at how little curiosity my Democrat colleagues and how little curiosity some elements of the mainstream media have in the decisions that our nation's chief law enforcement agency and top prosecutors have made. It's all, you know, this time last year, Democrats wanted Comey prosecuted. Remember that? They, yes. Harry Reid wanted him prosecuted. They were furious with the FBI, and now when we have a chance to go back and better understand the decisions they made and didn't make, there's a total lack of curiosity on behalf of my Democrat colleagues, which I just find stunning. Even though we know that Jim Comey leaked confidential information with the whole intention of getting it out to the New York Times and getting a special prosecutor in place. And that, that, that is just one of many questions I would like to ask former Director Comey. When you wanted special counsel with, 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 with President Trump, you leaked things to the media. How about when Loretta Lynch asked you to refer to it as a matter and not an investigation? How about the meeting on the tarmac? How about the real reason that you took this decision away from the Department of Justice and made it yourself in a really unprecedented press conference on July the 5th? You didn't leak that to the media, and you didn't ask for a special counsel or special prosecutor back in 2016. So I, I get that Jim Comey had to make a lot of hard decisions. Uh, he seemed to make them differently depending on who was in power. And that's just one of many questions I think members of Congress still have for the former director. Will you ask these questions of the former director? What, what does it look like in terms of who you will be questioning in the months ahead? Well, we had Andy McKay for a long time, the week, the last week we were there. Obviously, we want to talk to uh, Special Agent Strzok. Obviously, we want, we want to talk to Jim Baker, who's the, who was the general counsel for the FBI. And, of course, you want to talk to Jim Comey. That, 
My preference is, is to save the, the bigger witnesses for the end. We need to talk to everyone who was involved in the drafting of this exoneration memo in May of 2016. I mean, think about that for a second, Maria. You are drafting an exoneration memo before you have interviewed two dozen witnesses and before you've interviewed the target of the investigation. That's so right. I want to talk to Comey, but I want to talk to him towards the end. Not only that, but Peter Strzok, when he was texting his girlfriend, Lisa Page, said that we need an insurance policy in place. Now, Congressman, we have been hearing bits and pieces of this so-called Russia tr uh, probe, uh, so-called collusion between Trump and the Russians with absolutely zero evidence. Is that the insurance policy? Was, was Peter Strzok basically saying to his mistress, look, we're just going to keep investigating Donald Trump should he win. Boy, it surely, surely reads that way. But the only way we're going to know that is to interview Lisa Page and Peter Strzok. We've already I interviewed Andy McKay because in that text that you made reference to, they also made reference to a conversation they had in Andy's office. So we've already interviewed Andy McKay. We need to interview Peter Strzok and Lisa Page to figure out what insurance policy. Keep in mind, these two FBI agents, these dispassionate FBI agents who are immune from bias, one of them said the, 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 the election result should be 100 million to zero. So someone investigating Clinton and Trump could not think of a single solitary American citizen who would vote for Donald Trump for president. And we're supposed to have confidence in the objectivity of that particular agent. That's why we need to talk to him. That's why we need the text. That's why we need the emails. And we shouldn't have to wait six months to get it. That's exactly right. Americans want to see the rule of law. If we cannot trust the FBI, the CIA, by the way, the IRS, we know what the IRS d did a year ago or two years ago, th th then what is the, the, the point of the freedoms of America? Let me ask you this, because we've been watching this Russia probe. How long is this going to go on? Because we we still haven't had any evidence of any collusion. When is it appropriate for Bob Mueller to come out and say, yes, definitively, there's no collusion here, but what I have uncovered is collusion at the top of the FBI between the FBI leadership and Hillary Clinton? Well, Maria, some of my Democrat colleagues, namely Adam Schiff, said he had evidence, more than circumstantial evidence of collusion before the investigation even began. So, I mean, keep that in mind. The ranking member, the ranking Democrat on the House Intel Committee had evidence of collusion before we interviewed our very first witness. Almost 60 Democrats voted to move forward with impeachment already before Bob Mueller has released a single finding, before the House Intelligence or Senate Intelligence Committees have released a single solitary finding. Almost 60 House Democrats think the president ought to be removed from office, and Adam Schiff says he has evidence of collusion. So I, I would tell your viewers, wait on Bob Mueller's investigation. The people in the House seem to have already made up their minds, and they're just going in search of evidence that validates or ratifies what they already believe. We have several witnesses left to interview. That is I can infuriating. Tell you this. That is infuriating. There's been, well, it's only infuriating if you have high expectations. I, I, I have been in Congress seven years. That is not where serious investigations take place. It is where Senate campaigns uh, in California take place, but it's not where serious investigations take place. I do have confidence that Bob Mueller's going to reach the right decision and interview the right people, and hopefully the American people can have confidence in the result he produces, but you can't have confidence in an investigation where the ranking Democrat prejudges it before you've interviewed your very first witness. That's right, and we can't have confidence if nothing's being done and there's never any accountability here. Obviously, you have been searching for the truth. Devin Nunes is searching for the truth, but people are questioning the head law enforcement individual. Here's what the guy who used to have your seat, chairman of oversight, said on Fox News this week about Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Listen to this, sir. Attorney General Sessions, his time has come. He's got to go. I, I, I agree with Meadows and Jordan on this. He's not existed in this investigation. He's irrelevant, and I think it was a bad pick, and it's time for him to go. Right. Should Jeff Sessions step down? Well, I think, uh, former Chairman Chaffetz, uh, those are two different points. Uh, whether or not he should step down, I can't think of anything he's done since he's been the Attorney General that warrants his removal from office. The better question, I think, is whether or not he should have been the pick in the first place, Maria. 
and, and whether President Trump depict him and whether or not then Senator Sessions should have said, you know what, maybe I'm not the right person. Over 40 of our states have an attorney general who is independently elected by the voters. Less than a handful have the governor pick the attorney general. So I think what, what your viewers and what my fellow citizens want is an attorney general that is objective, that is fact-centric, that we can have confidence in whatever conclusions he or she reaches. And as long as we continue to pick friends and campaign supporters to be the attorney general, whether it's President Obama with Eric Holder or whether it's John F. Kennedy with Bobby Kennedy or whether it's Trump and Jeff Sessions, the attorney general position is too important to reward some political supporter with. So I, I don't I can't think of anything he's done since he's been the AG that warrants his removal. I can think of a lot of reasons that maybe the president should have interviewed other people and found someone apolitical and independent to hold this very important position. By the way, at this point, the Democrats will make it very hard in terms of putting another AG in place. It would fall to Rod Rosenstein. Well, they made it pretty hard to put Sessions in place. I That's think the true. vote was, what, 51 to 49? That's the environment that we live in. The de I mean, you could pick Jesus and the Democrats would vote against him. I mean, that that's the environment that we're in. So yeah. if you're not going to get Democrat support, at least at least have the self-awareness to know that you picked the very best woman, the very best man that you could. I just think this position is too important to reward a political supporter yeah. with. Pick someone who's really, really good at law enforcement and, and frankly is apolitical yeah. or, or let the people decide. Right. Let the Supreme Court pick. There are lots of different ways to pick an attorney general. Mr. Chairman, we all want the truth. Thank you so much for joining us.